morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of clarinets, caps, and coffee. Alright, so last week I gave you guys an exercise in the interval of a sixth and had some great comments um, suggesting to practice that in different keys, practice transposing, and so I think, I think that's a great idea. Um, as a clarinet player, we tend to need to um, transpose C clarinet parts um, sometimes and if you're among you know the people out there who might not have an A clarinet, you might have to transpose for A clarinet. So I think those are two practical transpositions to practice when um, practicing uh, practicing transposing. So let me know how you guys did with that exercise. Did you practice it articulated? Did you do it legato? Did you do it? you know, faster, slower, whatever. Um, let me know how that went. Um, I know it certainly helped me just kind of build up a little bit of core strength and air support and all of that stuff. Um, now today I'm going to um, just talk a little bit about uh, one of the things that has really been on my mind this week in my practicing and my playing. Um, but before we do that, um, I just want to remind everyone that I have a Patreon community and um, if you guys enjoy what I'm doing, I have a tier just for my uh, my YouTube followers and pretty soon I'm going to add another tier, um, a special tier, and I will let you guys know very soon what that is, but I'm pretty excited about it. So be sure to head on over there and check it out and check out the perks that I have. And um, for those of you who are looking for something a little extra, and I also teach private lessons online, so if you send me a message um, at the link below, the messages go directly to me. So I would love to work with anybody who has found me on YouTube. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid, just reach out and, and we'll figure out a lesson schedule. Man, she is really shedding. It's fall. You're supposed to be putting on a winter coat, right? No, aren't you cold? Yeah. So I actually performed a concert on Wednesday. Woo! And it was broadcast live on WFMT, Chicago's uh, classical music radio station. And they actually recorded a video of the whole concert as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and share a link to that below. But um, aside from that, so in preparation for this concert, I... In addition, you know, obviously it's being very excited and, and having to kind of redistribute how much time I spent doing various things um, in order to be able to practice enough uh, for this concert. Um, I, 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 I had to think, I thought a lot about, about um, just breathing and air and projection and, you know, all the normal things that go into performing and playing in a larger space and I mean I don't know about you guys but for six months I have basically been practicing in this very small space um you know it's carpeted there's not there's you know a lot of stuff around and I I had to really kind of remember how it felt to play in a larger larger hall and one of the things that one of the things that I kind of perhaps rediscovered is just how much air we can take in to our bodies and along those lines not just how much air we can take in but how to breathe in a relaxed way and really fill up everything and and produce a projected supported but beautiful sound and so i the, the exercise i'm going to give you guys is actually from a solo in the bearman method it's um it's the oh, i'm going to pronounce this wrong but it's the uh, Landelier Tempo de Valse, and I actually thought that the third variation of this would be really great um, to just kind of give you guys kind of practice, pr 
projection and think about sound and breathing a little bit more. The beginning of this starts off piano and then the, the second part of it um, grows into forte, the louder dynamics, and then it kind of finishes off. And I think one of the hardest things is being able to project your sound in the softer dynamics and along the same lines, having a nice, round, beautiful sound also in the louder dynamics. And so my suggestion is this, okay? So um, a friend of mine actually does this when she does, um, oh, well, she's in my quartet, Nora. She does this whenever she goes to clinics and she has, um, has everybody stand up and put their hands right under their rib cage and take a nice deep breath. And to really feel, I actually um, suggest also just kind of feeling the bottom of the rib cage, not just the squishy part, and take a nice deep breath as if you were, you know, just saying home in reverse and really feel your rib cage expand. And if you find one of, one of my biggest problems is sometimes I actually in my effort to sound really good, I overextend my back and I can't actually expand the the back part of my rib cage. And so I try to imagine that there's like a little string on top of my head aligning my spine and then this um, more upward position and try to expand from the bottom up and just imagine And as you exhale, your core should just be engaged naturally and allow the, the wind to, to come out in, you know, with a rapid, rapid speed. So the speed of your air should be the same whether you're playing soft or you're playing loud. It's just the volume of air that changes between soft and loud. And so the speed of the air is controlled mainly by your tongue position. So if you keep your tongue high and the wind really focused going at the reed, and if you rely on, you know, your whole breathing mechanism, <laughs> then you'll end up having a really nice, rich sound at all dynamic levels. And I'm not a big one to do, do the long tones from like extremely soft, extremely loud. Um, I actually like to do that more in context with something beautiful like this, like a, a simple etude or, you know, piece of music or an excerpt or something like this. I think um, having musical intention helps me, helps me execute technical issues a little bit more effectively. So I'm going to go ahead and play this for you guys. And again, what I'm thinking about is just trying to take nice expanded breaths and imagining, imagining supporting my sound from the belly up and allowing my, my body to really expand and contract with, with all of the air that I need to be able to play with. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do this and yeah, let me know what you think.
All right, guys, that was so much fun. I think it's such a beautiful little solo piece to practice. And, well, actually a beautiful little excerpt to practice just beautiful legato playing at various dynamic levels with various types of articulation. So I hope you guys enjoy practicing this this week and I hope these tips will help you guys sound that much better. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend and as always, happy practicing.